Hi, welcome to the part 2 of Wolf HPA system installation. Okay, so next we will place the fire control unit inside the gearbox and screw it with a screw through this hole and what we do we must uh, use plastic washers they will be inside the accessory package and we, because uh, we must use a plastic washer in order to not damage any traces on fire control unit Now we screw the screw onto the fire control unit. Like this, so the fire control unit is fixated, so it shouldn't wobble. Uh, what we need to check is also if the screw doesn't protrude through the other side of the gearbox and right now it doesn't so it's okay otherwise you need to shorten it if you will go if you will shorten that screw it is necessary to remove the fire control unit so any metal chips doesn't end on the fire control unit okay now that fire control unit is in place we must uh, root the wires uh, wires uh, for the power supply uh, this type this uh, customer wants to have the wires routed to the back to the buffer tube so what we do is route it through the these channels for wires like so if you are if you think you will be short on the wire you can go directly but be careful because there are some sharp edges and sharp edges will damage your your um, cables and possibly destroy the fire control unit or your battery okay so the next thing we will do is take the magnet which is placed in on holder and we place it onto the trigger like this okay next thing we check how well it the magnet is aligned with the sensor the hull sensor is uh, this component on the fire control unit this one okay it seems very well aligned but additional thing that we need to check is that the magnet or the holder doesn't touch the hull sensor because you you shouldn't when the you pull it fully back the trigger the sensor shouldn't uh, touch magnet otherwise you will bend it and this will cause the sensor to fail uh, but this gearbox has this uh, groove right here so it restricts the movement of the trigger so we can also check it with the other half we can see that the magnet doesn't touch the hull sensor so this is okay now that we checked that there is no issues with with uh, magnet, magnet, then we can glue it uh, using uh, super glue. Okay. 
we just add few drops here and here and that's it Okay, so the next thing we will do is place the sticker on the selector plate. The sticker should be positioned like this. We take the sticker and glue it right here, like so. This is a sticker for the optical sensor, which is this component on the fire control unit and it senses the position of selector okay now what we do is we can place selector back we check that it moves freely and we place back the safety level check if uh, if the if uh, safety lever is released okay the next thing we do is we are gonna place the programming unit cable onto the fire control unit which is uh, this connector right here like so and we are gonna you can either route it to the back side through this channel like so or you can route it downwards inside the grip however you like it uh, what we'll do on this one we will route, route it to the grip we will go over this tower right here and clip it right next to the wires for the battery like so uh, why we're doing this is simply if we will accidentally pull the cable the cable will be fixated by this radius and it will not put any strain on the connector uh, but what we can see right now here is that we are bending it over sharp corner. We can either either ground the corner off, but since we have already installed in everything else, uh, we will not do that, that. Therefore, what we will do is take some tape and reinforce the cable right on that corner. Just like so, and we put everything back in place. Okay, so now the cable is pretty much, pretty much better protected on that corner. What you should be also careful of is screw length from the grip. In this picture you can see that there is screw mark in orange that is far too long and therefore it could damage your wires. Solution to this can be seen on this picture where we root 
the wires on the different groove and therefore avoid getting damaged by the screws. During placement of cables you should also check the right side of the gearbox. If you can see that there are these pins marked in red that could damage your wires you should remove them using file or some other tool. The next step is to use uh, the hose which is supplied with the engine and connect it to the air fitting and be careful be careful here so you don't get hurt so just take it easy like so and to check if the hose is properly fitted on you you try to pull it down and it and it shouldn't come off like so okay if you want to in any case if you want to remove the air hose what you do you use a knife and you cut the holes from the back side like so to the forward multiple times so you don't damage the barbs on the fitting and then you uh, then you open it and remove it okay the next thing we place the engine inside we connect the nozzle connector the valve connector and place the engine inside so the wires for the nozzle should either go below the holes or above doesn't really matter however you like it just make sure that everything everything closes properly like so okay good so next we take the other half of gearbox and close everything together what you need to be especially careful is uh, the cables so we don't the cables don't get clipped anywhere when we close the gearbox So like this we can see that the gearbox is properly closed. One thing I, I forgot to mention is uh, we need to install this buffer tube nut. So it goes instead of spring guide. Uh, because uh, in this case the buffer tube uh, nut is a little bit too big these uh, fins are too big we need to cut them down Okay, so it stands, stays inside, so now we try to close the gearbox again, it is 
is even better if you do this earlier. It's a bit easier. Okay. So yeah. Okay, good. I forgot to show you how to do calibration when engine is installed in the gearbox. So now we will skip into the future to see how calibration is done when engine is inside the body. And the process is exactly the same. Now we are back into recalibration menu. We choose three selected positions. Select OK. And now we repeat the recalibration process. Okay. We set selector to save. Press up. Select set selector to position one. Press up. And we are going to set selector to position 2 and press up. The next thing we do is press trigger a few times. If we have some wobble inside trigger, we move it also sideways. So the, the processor captures all the values. And when we are done, we press up. Now we are back to the present and now we will check if everything works properly okay so now we check if the gun shoots so on the near the semi it shouldn't work okay move a little back firing semi and all the way to the back. okay so now that we confirm that the gun uh, is shooting and everything is connected correctly we can proceed with the installation so that's it for this video make sure to check next part link is in the description bye